Are you looking for a great piano-related book to read during your summer holidays this year? If so, then stay tuned for my recommendation, something I read myself a couple of years ago that I really enjoyed. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. This is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner. The place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves a piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If this is your first trip here, then please don't forget to subscribe. Simply click that little icon that's in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now, and it's all done for you. Whenever I'm away from the piano, especially on holiday, on weekends away, I still like to maintain that piano connection. And I'll do that either by maybe reading my latest issue of Pianist magazine, or of course by watching YouTube, my favorite channels and my favorite pianists. And sometimes I'll try and find a good piano related book. Though in fairness, these aren't so easy to find. And you know, aside the very educational books by people such as Neuhaus, there's not really an awful lot of choice. However, if you are looking for a great read, then there's one that I came across a while ago called Play It Again, an Amateur Against the Impossible, written by a gentleman called Alan Rusbridger. This is an absolutely fantastic book to take away on holiday with you. One of the reasons why, in fact, I liked it so much is that it even changed significantly the way I organise my own practice time, based on one of the anecdotes that uh, Alan mentions in this book. I first came across this book whilst I was reading an edition of Pianist magazine. I think it was the letters section, and I was on holiday in Bali at the time. And I remember thinking, oh, this sounds like an interesting book. And of course, with the wonders of modern technology, it wasn't actually long before I'd managed to find the Kindle edition of it on Amazon, downloaded it to my iPad, and I was sitting by the pool with the book there ready to go. The basic storyline is of a 56-year-old amateur pianist who one year he's on a piano camp in France and here's a fellow camper play the absolutely amazing ballad number one by Chopin in G minor. The pianist in question is so inspired by this feat that he thinks to himself, right, I'll be at the piano camp in a year from now so I'm going to set myself 12 months to also learn this piece. Of course, as you might guess, this piece is far more complex than anything this particular pianist has ever played before in his life. And the book effectively recounts his story of learning it over the months that follow. Of course, you might have worked out already that there are a couple of things about this book that make it far more interesting than that very brief overview that I've just given. The first thing that's interesting is that the amateur pianist concern just happens to be the editor of the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian definitely at the time is one of the largest newspapers in the UK. So as you can imagine, this guy's got quite an involved job. Alan is probably no different as a pianist to many of us. He played the piano an awful lot when he was younger. He studied the piano quite seriously. But as life takes over, family, career, then the piano for him, as for many of us, fell right onto the back burner and probably became something that he touched really quite rarely. Now, I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying, but he's no virtuoso. He's the same as a lot of us. It's sheer hard work and dedication that makes a difference as his playing improves over time. However, where Alan's very different, I guess, than most of us, is that I suppose largely through his professional career, he's built up a whole lot of musical contacts so that he's able to discuss Chopin's Ballade No. 1 with the likes of Daniel Barenboim or Murray Pariah. You know, musical giants that uh, most of us could only really dream of ever meeting and certainly not have been able to get them to discuss a piece of music in depth with us. Another thing, of course, that's worth pointing out is that many of us have very, very busy lives. We've all got lots and lots of things that we need to do. And in this respect, Alan's no different. 
He has a very demanding job. He spends a lot of time traveling. He spends a lot of time away. And of course, the piano is not a particularly portable instrument to take with you to practice. If you're unfamiliar with Chopin's Ballad No. 1, then it's a piece of music that was used in the film The Pianist. Now, not to be confused with the film The Piano. Now, this piece has got, you know, some fairly simple parts to it that are not so, so challenging, a couple of really, really beautiful melodies. But aside this, and it's some sort of 10, 11 minutes long, there are lots and lots of very challenging areas, and specifically the coda, which for most amateur pianists, I guess, we'd even go as far as to say is frightening. A lot of what resonated with me in Alan's overall quest was, in fact, how similar this is to what a lot of us amateur pianists do all the time. You know, we'll frequently choose pieces of music that really are technically beyond us, and we're more than prepared to spend a long, long time, up to a year or even more, learning them. The book itself is basically written in eight parts, and each of these eight parts is sort of a chronological period. Now, they're not split very equally. I think most of them really are defined by events such as a family holiday or a specific news story as it breaks. One of the things that made this book so interesting for me was the way Alan approached some of the very, very same challenges that I have myself. Finding time to practice is one of them. And of course, as a non-virtuoso, all of the technical problems that we, we all face and all try to overcome as best we can. As a couple of examples, let's first look at the challenge of finding time to practice. You know, Alan has a busy job, he works long hours, finding the time's not easy. And eventually, he takes Alan Bennett's advice from his book, How to Live Life in 24 Hours. And this advice really is to get up earlier in the morning. And in actual fact, I took this away and almost immediately on returning from my holidays, I changed my lifestyle. I started getting up each morning an hour and a half earlier so that now I'm able to do my piano before I leave for work. Another very familiar problem that many amateur pianists have, of course, too, is memorizing things. Alan says basically during his piano playing life, he was really quite an okay sight reader, did lots of chamber music, lots of accompanying with friends, and basically relied more heavily on his ability to read rather than his ability to memorize as he was playing piano. However, when you look at something like the ballad, there are at least sections of this piece that you just cannot play unless you've memorized them. Well, I don't think so anyway. Alan was able to approach this problem in quite a novel way, in fact. I mean, I guess again, because of his job and his contacts, he was able to get himself an interview with one of the top neuropsychiatrists from University College London. I very much enjoyed reading this aside and, you know, discovered a few things that I would not really thought about before. You know, for example, even when you're playing from the music, actually, more often than not, you're largely playing from memory. I'm not really going to go any further into what's in the book because, of course, that would just spoil the read for you. But I'd just like to say that it's literally packed with insights all the way through of the challenges faced by we amateur pianists trying to perfect the things that we love to play, yet with all the challenges of a full-time job or family and everything else that comes around. Equally, of course, because this has been written by the editor of The Guardian, you also get a fascinating insight into the behind-the-scenes side of such massive stories as they break to the public, especially from the point of view of the person who's actually managing this entire process. Alan finally managed to perform the entire ballad after about 16 months. So, OK, four months longer than he'd originally set himself, but I'm sure once you've read through the book, you'll more than agree that, you know, given what happened in his job during that 16 months, that's not at all a bad thing for him to have been able to do. When Alan was reflecting on the end-to-end -end experience in the epilogue, there were two main things that he called out. 
The first was that no matter what you do, there is always time. You can find it. It's just a case of finding it. And the second thing, which I'm quite pleased about from a personal perspective, is that he came to the conclusion that you can indeed teach a 56-year-old brain how to play new tricks. So my 52-year-old brain must still be in with a chance. You can pick up a copy of Play It Again, An Amateur Against the Impossible from Amazon easily enough. To be honest, I enjoyed this book so much, I pretty much didn't move from the moment I'd managed to finally get it downloaded onto my iPad until the moment I'd finished reading it. I highly recommend it as something that you might want to slip into your suitcase this year when you set off on your holidays. If you're not already, then please don't forget to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click on that little bell icon so that you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.